Okay, I'm here with Renee Phoenix from Fifth Arrivals. How are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. How about yourself? Good, good. Uh, let's start off by talking about your band, The Explicits, first. Um, okay. This was a band you started, and it was more of a gritty punk rock sound. Right. What inspired you to do that band? Uh, honestly, it was... I wrote some of my first music, like my first songs I actually written was um, Indestructible. And it just kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest. It's just like what I started writing, like how the style, it just kind of came out of nowhere, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up listening to Garbage and No Doubt, like a bunch of uh, female-oriented singers. And I was playing guitar for probably around that time maybe like 10 years by then and I never actually sat down and wrote a song and when I did this kind of I mean it was born like that's what just started to come out so <laughs> now how was your experience in that band during your time and how far did you get as a band were there label offers or where how far did you get um honestly the explicits was a really great learning experience for me I'm glad that I went through everything that we went through. Um, we did some pretty like bigger shows I remember doing. Uh, we were talking to a couple labels, like really indie labels, but I didn't feel I was completely ready to go down that route yet. I thought I had like a lot of growing to do and um, yeah, I mean it was a great learning experience and I'm glad I went through everything that I did because it makes me who I am today and I think it really helps my current situation right now, you know, uh, I've, I've grown from it, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. At some point, uh, Thomas has joined the band. He auditioned for your band, The Explicits, mm -hmm. and sometime during that period when you were working with Thomas, uh, mm -hmm. the style of the band changed, and of course the name of the band changed, and you went on to make Fifth Arrivals. Right. Uh, talk about how that transition occurred. Um, at the time, we, the Explicits, we already had the CD out and everything, and I was looking for a guitarist. And I got together with Thomas, and we both start kind of um, brainstorming ideas and new songs, and I realized my style was changing. I was growing as an artist, and what I was currently writing was completely, just had like such a different vibe than what the Explicits had. And I, I just decided to start anew, honestly, and... Um, go down this path and concentrate more on singing, uh, like melodies and that kind of stuff. Like the explicits was more of a gritty punk thing and I love doing it, but it's, you know, I, I grew into kind of the style we have now. Um, yeah, I, I, I grew. <laughs> yeah. Now with Fifth Arrivals, you guys released your uh, first album and mm -hmm. you guys have been able to play several label showcases. I've been to several of those where you had to play for yeah. labels. Uh, how many labels have you played for exactly and how many times for each label have you played for, do you know, approximately? Uh, uh, let me think. I know, I think Atlantic was the one that we played for most. I think we probably did not so much showcases for them. Um, there was a A&R two there that really liked us and like he would always just come out and see us so, like every show um, would be like around his area. But uh, we have probably played for Atlantic Records maybe five to seven times, somewhere around there. Uh, if not like as official label showcase just for like the people who work at Atlantic because they really liked what we were doing. Um, as far as other labels go, we've done a handful, not um, considerably like a lot, not like ten or anything, probably like closer to like, you know, the five or seven mark for like different labels and, uh, you know, either it being like a show that we're doing or like they'd come out to our rehearsal space. So we've, we've dabbled, we've, we've dabbled. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, if you continue on with Fit for Rivals and you keep going, you release a new uh, album mm -hmm. and you don't get signed after being looked at by so many labels, Right. is there kind of going to be like an empty spot for you? Is there kind of going to be, do you need that justification from a label? Mm, I don't think so. I mean what we're doing now it's working I mean we just got over two million YouTube hits we've had like zero marketing dollars behind steady damage and it's obviously it's catching on and nowadays just like with the current state of the music industry you don't need a label 
to get your music out there to get people to hear it. I'm like, sure, it helps because you know you have like more of that financial backing, but we're doing really well as an independent band, and we're seeing substantial growth right now. So it's all very exciting. So label or not, we're going to continue doing what we're doing. We're growing as a band. We're growing our fan base. Everything's headed in such a positive direction right now. Um, a label may be the icing on the cake. It just depends, like the type of offer you. Get. There's so many variables to it. Um, if you can find a good label with a good deal, which is very rare, <laughs> uh, now I can see it being beneficial. But right now, what we're doing is working, and it's all very exciting. Yeah. Okay. What is ultimately gonna for you at the end of the day when Fifth Arrivals is done? Mm -hmm. What's gonna determine for you? if that was a, su a successful adventure or not, in your mind? Um, to me, it's already been a successful adventure, and it's continuing to do so. Uh, I mean, just like the response that we're getting from fans, the positive, overwhelming response, and, um, you know, I just got a message from a street team that formed in Germany, and they, like, made all these stickers and everything, and they're, like, posting them everywhere. That kind of blows my mind. I've never even been to Germany, but it's pretty cool that people, like, from that far away somewhere I've never even been can enjoy the music and to me that's awesome like I, I love it I love our fans we have the best fans in the world and at the end of the day that's what makes this worthwhile so to me we've already been successful I mean of course I want to take over the world you know like that's our motto we want a world domination for fit for rivals but um you know we're all really happy with the success that we've had so far and the continuous growth so. I mean do you get to see like exactly everywhere that your band is posted because I, I noticed it a lot doing this page yeah. um, you have a singer in Austria that's a big fan of yours that I talked to the other day just randomly just uh, cool. from Austria yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you know Brooklyn Allman uh, who is uh, Greg Allman from the Allman Brothers daughter oh okay she's in a band called Picture Me Broken and her band just posted you the other day saying okay. these guys are amazing that's crazy. Out of California. <laughs> so it's it's pretty yeah. crazy to see from the couple of years how far you guys have progressed and just mm -hmm. where your band pops up. It's, it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah it's pretty mind-blowing. Uh, I don't really, I don't, I don't like Googling myself or any of that kind of stuff, but um, just from things like I see like on, um, you know, like my web pages and like the responses that we've been getting, it's pretty amazing. Pretty lucky. So. When you look at the current state of the music industry and mm -hmm. who's on top, who the money makers are, and who's making millions, right? How does it make you feel when you look and see uh, a band such as Nico Vega, which is an amazing band? Mm. Uh, their song "Gravity" has about 119,000 views on YouTube. Right. You look at a song like "TikTok" from Kesha, which has <laughs> 84 million views as of this morning. Yeah. How does it make you feel when such amazing artists like Nico Vega are probably not bringing in the amount of money that nearly right. that they should? I mean, it's it's the nature of the beast. I, I don't really know how else to put it. I mean, there's always going to be a Kesha. There's always going to be you know like an Avril Lavigne type figure. There's always going to be like these staples. You know, um, not just like from today, but like you know from previous years of music. There's always going to be people like that and it's just what's popular right now and you can't really do anything about that especially like on the radio um, I mean we're going to continue doing what we're doing because we really believe in it and hopefully there's enough people who believe in it and uh, hopefully the music industry at least what people are listening to right now it kind of has a changeover to maybe like more of a rock driven radio presence which would be awesome like I'd personally like that um, but you know, it's the, like I said, it's the nature of the beast. You know, there's always going to be Kesha, there is always going to be so and so, and to you know say that you hate them for everything that they're doing. Da, 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 I mean, it's not going to do anything. What's going to do something is going out there, believing in what your band's doing, and continue to do what you do. You know, with everything you got, and then eventually people are going to take notice. So okay, what do you uh, do? I've got a. Um couple things that some fans wrote down okay um nick s which uh i don't know if you've seen he runs a fan page uh called save me from this wicked person i've become 
Oh, cool. He has a fan page, and uh, he asked if you had any plans to do any shows in Chicago. Chicago. Uh, right now, we're working on a lot of pre uh, pre-production for our album, but I'm sure when we're done with our album, we are going to be touring everywhere in the U.S. again, um, like we did previously. So I'd love to go to Chicago. Uh, all of us would love to go to Chicago, I know. And... You know, I can only assume after we release the album, we're going to be um, touring heavily to support it. Okay. Uh, Josh Lira had uh, two questions. Uh, he said, do you prefer large crowds, uh, outdoor shows, or small intimate venues? Um, either or can be fun, but I think I prefer, prefer the um, smaller venues with like a packed crowd where like you can barely move you know it's just like that kind of gritty rock and roll sweat dripping off of you atmosphere I love that uh, the outdoor festivals we've done Warp Tour and we did Rockville in Jacksonville Florida um, both of those were a great time like we had a blast doing those and I'd love to do that again it's just a different atmosphere I mean I prefer the smaller venues but also the outdoor ones it was fun too so. okay uh, he also asked, uh, what's your favorite album of all time? Oh, this is a hard one. Um, let me think. Maybe, probably Garbage version 2.0. They're my favorite band. They've been my favorite band since I was 13. And was, I just remember having that CD constantly in my CD player. Like, it never left. <laughs> it was like permanent staple in there. So I'm, I'm sure you're glad that they're coming back. Oh, I'm so happy. Like On their I'm, own label. Yeah, so. on their own label, yeah. Shirley yes. Manson is heading the, their own label, so it's pretty exciting that they're doing that. But another example, you don't need a label. I mean, yeah, they had a bunch of success in the 90s like through a big label, and they probably had a lot of push with that, but it's pretty cool that they can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, one last fan one. Uh, Jacob Roberts was posting everywhere, so I have to uh, give him... A little bit of shout out because he was posting everywhere. He has a friend, Ashley Gray, that supposedly is a super fan of yours. So he was asking, please, 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 could you say hi to Ashley Gray for him? All right. Hello, Ashley Gray. Okay. <laughs> you probably just made his day. Awesome. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, one final question for you. Okay. Uh, every artist kind of wants to leave a legacy behind. You kind of think about what are people going to say about you at the end of the day, you know, your fans and everything, what your legacy is. So if you have a magazine writes an article about you at the end of your career, mm -hmm. and I want you to fill in this sentence for me. Okay. <laughs> Renee Phoenix was... Renee Phoenix was... Uh... See, this is a hard one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm throwing you under the bus on this one, but um, maybe what would you want people to say about you for your legacy? What in your mind would you want that article to say? Like, what I want to do is I want to pick up where Young Jet left off in that gritty rock and roll type of way, and. Anything that would concern me, taking that torch from her and taking it 10 extra miles, that would be great. Like, I just want to go down as someone who makes real rock music, and I mean, I'm really passionate about it, and I believe in what I do. So anything that just, I guess, talks about that would be great. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. so uh, <laughs> you're working on the new album right now, and it's tentative release date of sometime 2012? basically sometime 2012 we have God, we have like 60 songs right now that we're, <laughs> that we're going through and we're just trying to be as choosy as possible uh, it's hard it's hard to do but I'm really excited about this uh, new path that we've taken it's definitely a more gritty rock and roll path um, I mean, it's still going to have, like, kind of more pop-conscious melodies and everything, kind of, like, steady damage had, but it's going to sound real rock and roll, and I'm just so excited. We're all excited to be able to play songs like that. I mean, that's what we really enjoy doing. So. Okay. Yeah. And if people want to go buy your previous album, shirts, you have a new online store up on your website now, right? Right, yeah, we just put up a new online store where 
actually going to have uh, new merch designs and um, a few more like goodies and everything uh, available soon. So. And that's uh, www.fitforrivals.com? Right. Mm -hmm. You can find all our information right on there, all our official links, everything. So. All right. Uh, anything in closing you want to say to your fans? Uh, thank you so much for being so supportive of what we're doing, for taking the time to listen to our music, for sharing it with your friends. Uh, we all really appreciate it and you're making us stoked to do this like we love what we do and we're so happy that we can share it with you so thank you thank you and thank you Mark for having me on the interview oh absolutely I appreciate your time yeah no problem thank you